When you look at security recommendations for your router, there's no doubt that you'll see an item that says disable WPS. And that's because all of these websites are proposing that WPS presents a significant security risk to your home network. Today, I'm here to tell you that WPS may not represent as big of a security risk as it may seem from looking at these websites or these other references. In today's episode from Network From Home, we're gonna be talking all about the security implications of WPS and whether or not you need to worry about disabling it in your home network. I think it's important that we refresh ourselves on the functionality and intended purpose of WPS before we talk about the security implications of it. I'll go over things at a high level today, but if you're looking to get a deep dive of what WPS is and how it's intended to be used in your home network, I've made another video that goes into depth about this. I'll link to it up above if you wanna check that out before proceeding with this video. So to recap, the whole purpose of WPS is it's meant to give you a quick and easy way to connect your devices to your router's Wi-Fi networks. If you have WPS enabled on your router, and this can be done in your router settings, but if WPS is enabled, to kick off the process, what you first need to do is click the WPS button on the back of your router. I'll give you a quick close-up of this just as a refresher. Okay, so here's what I'm talking about right here. So once you press this WPS button on your router, what it will do is it will start to broadcast messages to the surrounding area. These messages are essentially probes to see if there are any devices in that surrounding area that want to connect to the router's Wi-Fi networks. If there's a device in range of these broadcasts that wants to connect to the router's Wi-Fi networks, all the device needs to do is basically say, yes, I'm interested, I want to connect, to the Wi-Fi network of the router, and then the router and device will establish a wireless connection, all without using a password. And this is exactly why there are security implications when it comes to WPS. Just think about that. You're essentially allowing devices to connect to your Wi-Fi network without a password. So from a security perspective, you wanna be extra wary of the devices that are connecting to your Wi-Fi networks, especially if they don't have to use a password. How do you prove that that device connecting to your home network is a device that you actually want on your home network? And this is exactly why you see so many security recommendations saying you should disable WPS on your router. And in addressing this, as I mentioned in the introduction, depending upon your situation, WPS might not present a significant security risk based upon the fact that you can connect devices to your Wi-Fi network without a password. And I think there are two main factors that come into play here. The first, as I mentioned, is that you need to click the WPS button on the router itself in order to initiate this WPS process. So what does this mean? This means that you have to have physical access to your router in order to connect devices to your wireless networks using WPS. I don't know about you, but the people that are in my home and have physical access to my router are people who I trust with access to my Wi-Fi networks. Very rarely do I have strangers in my home or people that are unsupervised that would have access to my router and be able to click this WPS button and connect a wireless device to my Wi-Fi network without me knowing about it. So if you have your router in your home, chances are there are probably not a lot of untrusted people that have unsupervised access to your router at any given time. On the other hand, if your router is used in an office building or more of a public setting, that certainly presents more risk because more people could potentially have physical access to this router and use WPS to connect untrusted devices to your Wi-Fi networks. So let's say somebody doesn't have physical access to your router, 
is there still a way for them to be able to use WPS to connect to your Wi-Fi networks? So let's say I have devices in my home network that I want to connect to my Wi-Fi networks using WPS. What I do, going back to our router here, is I click this WPS button and that beacon is broadcast from the router saying, are there any devices that want to connect to my Wi-Fi networks? This broadcast happens for about 60 seconds. So if somebody wants to connect to your router's Wi-Fi networks using WPS and they don't have physical access to my router, they would literally need to be sitting there within range of my router, sitting there and waiting for me to press the WPS button. And when that happens, they'll have 60 seconds to connect to my router. What is the likelihood of this? Not very high, to be honest. If you live in an apartment complex and you have people above you or below you, this might be something you want to consider, but chances are you're talking about a 60 second window where someone literally needs to be waiting for those broadcast messages from your router saying, are there any devices that want to connect to me without a password? So as you can see here, that's a very tight window. And all this to say, when we're talking about WPS and security in your home, if your router is used in your home network and you don't have a lot of untrusted people walking through your home at any given time, or you don't live in an apartment complex or in an area where somebody could by chance be listening in on the broadcast message from your router, and connect to your Wi-Fi networks using WPS, chances are the risk of leaving WPS on is not very high. So the, the bottom line of what I'm saying here today is that you don't need to have WPS disabled at all times the second you get your router. Feel free to use it for small windows when you know you're connecting wireless devices to your Wi-Fi networks and then once you have everything set up and everything is connected to your router, go ahead and turn it off. There's, you don't need it anymore, so you might as well disable it. Okay, so let's say you wanna go about disabling WPS on your router. You've set up your home network, you've connected all the smart devices and wireless devices in your home to your wireless networks. You aren't expecting to connect any additional wireless devices moving forward, at least in the short term so you might as well disable WPS. After all, you can always use the password of the wireless networks for your router to connect additional devices moving forward. So let's take a look at exactly how we do this. Okay, so the first thing we wanna do here, we wanna log into our router settings if we want to disable WPS. So the first thing we wanna do, if we type in the IP address of our router, we will then be able to get to our router's login page. So let's do that now. My IP address for my router is 192.168.0.1. And here I can go in and enter the login information for my router settings. As a note here, if you're not very familiar with logging into your router settings, you're not sure what your password is, you wanna look up what the default username and password is for your device. I have made a detailed video that I'll link to up above that talks about how you go about accessing and logging into your router settings. So go ahead and check that out now if you're a little unsure about how to do this. In the meantime, I'm going to log into my router settings and then we'll move to the next step. Okay, so here we are, I've logged into my router settings. So now let's navigate to WPS and make sure that we turn it off. One thing to note here is I have a TP-Link Archer A7 router. If you have a different make and model of router, chances are this will look a little bit different for you, but for the most part, the settings and where to find them will be similar. Most routers have very similar interfaces, so this should be very similar regardless of the type of router you have. Okay, so to disable WPS, I first need to go to the Advanced Settings tab, so let's do that now. 
Okay, and from here, I need to go into System Tools. And then System Parameters. Okay, now that I'm under System Parameters, if I scroll down a little bit, you'll have some wireless network settings up front but then we get to WPS. And here you can see, enable WPS is clicked. So to disable WPS, I just wanna click this box and select save. You wanna make sure that you click that save button to lock in the fact that WPS is disabled. Okay, once this setting takes effect, there's actually a place where you can go and double check to at least make sure that WPS is not active on your router and that's to access your WPS specific settings within your router settings. So what we have to do here is I need to scroll up and go to wireless settings right here under this wireless header. And then you see WPS here. I'm going to click WPS to look at the WPS specific settings for my router. Okay, and here's exactly what we want to see right here your WPS function is disabled. It looks like our disabling WPS took effect in our router settings, so we're good to go. You don't have to worry about WPS on your router. Okay, so that pretty much covers it for WPS security. As I mentioned, just go ahead and look at your unique circumstance and make a determination of how risky WPS is for your router. For many of us, it probably doesn't present a huge risk. It still doesn't hurt to disable it if you know you don't need to add a bunch of wireless devices to your Wi-Fi network. If you have any questions about this information today, please feel free to drop a comment below. If you found this information useful, please hit the like button. This will ensure that the video gets shared with other people who might benefit from this advice as well. Additionally, if you like content about your home network, securing your home network and administering your home network devices, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. These are exactly the type of topics that I plan on creating content for moving forward. So you're welcome to come along for the ride. As always, thanks for checking out this episode from Network From Home. We'll catch you on the next one.